The collection of problems that we need to deal with have to deal with the fact that the processing elements that are doing the actual computation have fewer resources available to them. Uh, it used to be that uniprocessors would just get bigger and bigger, and so you have more and more resources dedicated to a single thread of processing. Now with power constraints and with multi-threading, the goal to get as much throughput as possible is to get as few resources per thread as you can reasonably provide and still get reasonable programmability and performance. And with those decreasing resources, uh, primarily bandwidth, uh, threading, uh, threading or uh, conditional control, basically SIMD, the SIMD design pattern from the architecture standpoint. Those are the main things that you have to deal with. Uh, so what we talk about in the paper is managing bandwidth really comes down to three main categories. Number one, you have to actually efficiently use bandwidth that you bring in, which has to deal with uh, stride one accesses so that you can bring in rows from DRAM instead of touching a row and then throwing away the rest of it except it's getting worse because there's not as much caching or buffering in the memory system to keep these lines around after you fetch them. Uh, so it's even becoming more important as time goes on. If you decompose a very data parallel program, you have these threads that can either consume an input point and produce some collection of output point contributions, or you can have threads associated with output points and gather contributions from a region of input. It turns out that in hardware, with all of this parallelism, consistent memory models are expensive. And so it makes a lot more sense in many cases to associate your threads with output so that you don't have output contention. And it's a lot easier for hardware to manage collecting lots of input even that's shared among multiple threads. It's easier to do input sharing than it is to put do output contention in hardware. And so you need to start thinking about those kinds of design trade-offs. And that's all about using memory efficiently, using the memory system. Once you bring in the data, how efficiently can you use it once you've actually got it? And then you start talking about locality, whether it's uh, reusing data as much as possible within the, a group of tasks once you've brought it in, or producing a tile of output and keeping results local as long as you can before committing them to uh, final results that are, are visible to all threads. Uh, so you have to deal with uh, that level of uh, managing locality as well. And you've got the two patterns we talk about for input and output. And then the last one that we talk about is more dealing with the efficiency of massive threading. So there are two sort of sides to it. One, we talk about regularization, which is recognizing this is really about the SIMD. Having different processing elements do actually different work is becoming more expensive. Broadcast is a lot easier than anything else. And so regularization is a way of thinking and changing your code so that the core of your code is as uniform as possible, that all your parallel processing is doing as much the same thing as it possibly can. And sometimes that means writing a little bit of extra code to sort of clean out all the extra irregular stuff using some different method so that the core of the lifting is done by very regular, very normal, very uniform kinds of programs. And then you've got the issue of compaction, which is more on the data side. You also want your data accesses to be relatively uniform and regular and tightly coupled together. And so it could be that when you don't know exactly how much output you're producing, 
you need to coordinate so that you produce output in a, as tightly compact a format as possible so that related results are close together. And you also have to deal with kind of a uh, sorting mechanism as well. So when you start considering this input and output issue, if you associate threads with input, you can always compute based on input where your output should be. Depending on your data structures, if you have a given output point, it may not be incredibly obvious where the input relevant to that output is. Which is one reason that a lot of programmers, as a first step, will do an input-oriented decomposition. Say, I'll have some tasks, they'll be associated with input points, they'll compute where their output contributions should go and make them. The problem is, if that's an inefficient way to use memory, if contention on your output is an inefficient way to use the memory system, well, you want to do the conversion so that your tasks are associated with output, but then you start needing more information than you had before. Your output elements don't necessarily know where their input is coming from. And so you start having to introduce spatial data structures and other kinds of data structures for organizing input so that based on an output index you can easily find your input. That's not new. People have done these kinds of spatial data structures all the time for algorithmic complexity in a lot of situations. But dealing with massive threading means that you need to use them more than you even would have before because you should prefer an output oriented programming style in many cases and that means using spatial data structures in cases where they might not have been necessary before from an input oriented style. All of these come from relatively fundamental design constraints in the way that we have to build architectures today. Every level of hierarchy that you have, it is inefficient to communicate between tasks. The further away your different parallel tasks are, and the more of them you have, the less efficient it gets to communicate between them. So Google is sort of the ultimate in how many threads do they run in their data sensors. It's kind of ridiculous. And so you have the very similar methodology. What's relevant uh, for this issue of this magazine and where the industry is going is our individual chips are going to more look more and more like data centers as time goes on.